Uh, recently, we've been coaching a lot of MBA students who have been successful, and we believe that we can share some of these tips uh, that we share with them during our coaching with uh, with you on this channel. So, Paul, welcome and take us through. Uh, why do you think most students are rejected, especially those coming for MBA MBAs? Yeah, yeah, I. That's a very, 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 very important thing. It seems as though a lot of our friends are very interested in MBA programs, but you know. That's the trend that we are observing. So I'm going to share six things that we wrote here mm -hmm. together. Um, and I, I will try as much as possible to go as, you know, as deep as I can. But certainly, uh, we cannot make this video a very long video. So if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to any of us later on. And then we can uh, further explain or if you need personal help or anything like that. But here are the six reasons why we think it is becoming increasingly difficult for MBA students, especially uh, our African friends, brothers and sisters, to get their visas approved. Number one, a lack of understanding that the MBA program is a professional program. It's a professional program primarily in that it is not an academic program. Um, it is a professional program in that most of the people who are coming in are coming in directly from their various professions. So maybe the, the, their management, they are in management at the bank, are already uh, professionals in various health and you know whatever sectors that they already function, right? And so they, they are connecting and the reason why they are coming into this program is for an explicitly professional reason. Again, when we flip that same conversation, these MBA programs within the U.S., Africa, mm -hmm. as we have discussed many times, ha are designed to meet these professional needs, right? They're designed yeah. to meet these specific professional needs, right? They are, yeah. Of course, some programs have like you know, research uh, what yeah, and, components and, to it. Yeah. And Paul, even with the research, as you said, it is mm -hmm. geared towards a specific professional Go. For example, right. in the banking industry, in the yes. oil and gas industry, in the human resource industry. So right. you, your research is basically like a project analysis to advise professionals in their field, right? Yeah. So most people in MBA directly go into the industry. That's right. How do you find an MBA student going into teaching? Of course, they, right. they go into teaching, but most of them go into banking, they go into finance, they go into insurance, risk management. That's so the right. purpose, as you said, is specifically for industry-based people. Yeah. That's right. And, 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 and the reason why a lot of people don't get the visas is because they don't understand this very um, basic expectation. And they come in straight from undergraduate um, with maybe a very high scoring GPA in business and with very little experience and they think that it is possible for them to get into MBA programs here. You may be able to get the admission and I even argue that most people who get the admission with this uh, background, with a lack of professional background, they get it on a conditional basis. They, they are always advised to maybe take extra courses in some fields or you know do something extra to make their acceptance um, full and complete. Right. So the lack of a professional background makes um, your responses to questions like why an MBA very shallow because you've not been in an industry setting enough to be able to have a clear, sharp reason why an MBA is going to prepare you again for the professional world. Right. So consider, first of all, uh, the, the purpose of MBAs, especially in the U.S., consider your own interests and ask yourself, do they match and for us the key thing here is professionalizing working yeah. in a concretely professional environment i will yeah. say more about that because if not this video is going to be very long yeah. if well, I, if let, me, let me add a little to that and even there are those who are already in the profession like they are bankers they are accountants they are they already have chatted up like they are doing so well in their profession already and they apply for mba yet they are not able to articulate why the MBA will help them fulfill their professional needs. Like, that's right. what is like? Why do you need an MBA as a banker? Yeah. You need an MBA because you believe MBA will prepare you to take up a management position. That is not what my MBAs are meant for. It's different. When you yeah. take up the management position, what will you do? 
-hmm. with the MBA, like how would the MBA prepare you as a good manager to respond to uh, organizational supply chain demand or whatever? Mm -hmm. That is the key. So most people, yeah, there are also people already in the field who are already doing a lot. They've worked for 10 years as bankers. But when they come, when they go for the interview and they ask them, why do they need this visa? They are like, oh, I want to study this MBA program because it will help me take a position in my banking organization. That is yeah. not what the MBAs are meant for. They are not meant That's to right. help you take a position. That is mm -hmm. a peripheral. Yes, it's an added advantage. When you take the position, how would the MBA prepare you to solve real-world situation? And I think that That's is right. what many people like. Yeah. That, that that was actually going to be my second point, which is those yeah. already in the in the professional world, right? The first yeah. category was those who are not in the professional world mm -hmm. because they are not, they are not able to articulate any professional reason why they want to get into it. My second point is those already in the professional world who don't talk about their experiences within the professional world, but they talk about other things that end up being irrelevant. You know, yes. Uh, so it's very good that you brought that up. And, and because you brought it up, I'm not going to go any further. But the third reason why most people um, get into trouble with MBA visas is the lack of funding. Again, it ties back into the reasons why uh, these MBA programs are designed in the first place. It's because the program itself was designed for people already in the industry. And because it was designed for people already in the industry and they are being sent by their various um, companies, these schools don't have funds to give to students who are not being sent by their various companies and their various industries. And so it becomes difficult for you to get funds. And we have realized from our experience, of course, there are different people who get visas, but we have realized that the most of the students who get visas to go and pursue MBA degrees are either students that have been sent by their various institutions or organizations where they work professionally already or um you know students who have some kind of a you know substantial funds from the school themselves and again that's very difficult to do or, yeah, and and post who have saved themselves right students yeah for a period students, of time students who have their own money to be able to fund their own project. These are the three main categories. And I think, I don't know how we can solve this. And we probably don't want to get into long discussions on how to solve this particular issue. But I guess the main point that we want to make here is if you're considering an MBA, you should consider the financial implication as well, because the chances are 80 to 90% of the schools out there don't have funds for you. Yeah. Already. And 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 for the MBA too is really expensive. It is because very expensive. it is industry based. You are working yes. internship yes. with strong yes. industries and all that. It's it's yes. kind of expensive. There are also many students who fund their MBA with loans. And yes. in those cases, uh, remember the Harvard guy. Yes. He 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 is basically on loan. Uh, yes. Student from other places, North Carolina, and all that. Yes. They they had a loan, and yes. this is because. Most of these programs, these students have industry expertise who have been working for a long time and mm -hmm. they're able to secure good amounts of loan. And because they, they, they have the, the experience in their field, the kind of job that they will secure after studies will be able to pay their loans. So yeah. they are able to properly secure loans based on currently what they are doing. Right. Okay. If if I'm an accountant with GCB or if I'm an, uh, I work with let's say uh, let's say uh, Goy Ghana and mm -hmm. I I earn a lot of money I've saved something or I'm able to acquire a loan I I should be able to prove that my work now and my work in future will be able to help me pay the loan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and 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 I think that's uh, that's certainly very very important. You know. So I guess the, the advice that I want to give people is if you are thinking about an MBA, you really need to think about all of these sources. If you don't have yeah. the means of securing a loan and not just, it's not just about getting the loan approved, but it's also demonstrating that you're going to be doing something important professionally that is going to help you pay back the loan so the loan yeah. repayment plan right is also very important if you don't have that you don't also have money saved you're not also in an industry that is able to support you and give you the money that you are looking for um plus you didn't also get funding from the school then it's like your chances of getting a visa is reduced drastically <coughs> and you probably need to reconsider your plans of doing an mba I think the uh, the fourth reason here 
is the lack of a clear study purpose and plan which we have talked a little bit in the first uh-huh. point which is you know because you are not in an industry space or you are not thinking deeply about your, the space in which you are professionally you are not able to articulate professionally what skills and not what new ideas that this program is going to give you and that's going to affect you similarly having a very clear plan right what are you going to be doing with this degree afterwards again promotion is not enough guys let's let's take a pause here and and advise people please enough with the i'm going to get this degree so that i can take up a higher position enough with that it doesn't make sense just get it one step and for all right we don't get degrees only to get higher positions that's not what the degree is for the degree is to get degrees to solve solve problems to solve a problem in an industry so think about the problem forget about your own selfish career dreams and positions that you're looking for that will definitely come right but the main reason why you're getting a degree in fact think about this this way what is a degree it's a certification of an acquired knowledge right and what is the knowledge the knowledge is the ability to be able to solve a certain, you know, a set of technical issues. So think that way and stop thinking about your own, you know, growth and prof- profession. That might help, but that's not very important for the sake of the visa. So um, having a clear plan, but what are you really going to be doing with the knowledge that this new degree is going to give you is going to make a huge different difference in the way you approach your interview questions and eventually the decision that the viewer is going to come to at your at your interview. Yeah, um, yeah. so for the fifth point is inability of student to connect their MBA program and whatever they are coming to study to real world situation or profession, which we just talked about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it is okay to say you are coming to study MBA, but why do you need it? Like what's what motivated you to come and study? What problems yeah. will it help you solve in your organization, in your country? This is what the consultants are interested in. If you are interested in, let's say, risk management or insurance or MBA, looking at business data analytics, whatever focus, financial management, why do you need it? Right. Mm-hmm. I remember we coached a student who was coming for MBA and she was, an, uh, uh, she was a banker and she talked about uh, theft, data management, risk, loans, lack of loan payment and he explained that they are the the current banking system is not able to it doesn't have a good database uh, about its clients and how to trace who owns and where uh, these people are so they are always in debt they are always struggling to recoup or uh, uh, get their monies they give to uh, customers in loan so he's going to look at going to study mba with a focus on loan management data analytics and financial management risks analysis to be able to build a comprehensive database that can help the bank track its customers and see who based on real data or hypothetical or scientific data or however he she wanted to do it that concept in a way that that will mean that after school she's come to work with the bank use the knowledge create a kind of system a kind of database software a kind of tracking system that can help the company to track its customers and manage its loan this is a very important reason to connect your mba to the real world profession right in this okay. case this person is not interested in just taking position but yeah. looking at how the mba will help him or her solve the position. And That's the right. final thing, Paul, is that many people are not able to articulate why they choose a specific school to yeah. pursue MBA. Mm-hmm. Some people go for their interview and they come for co- they are rejected. Now they come for coaching and you ask them, why did you choose this school? And they have basically no reason. Oh, I chose this school because the, the, the school is good. Uh, the, the program that the school <laughs> offer will help me uh, get the right skills that I need. What program that the school offer and what skill will the program help yes. you get? How will the program help you get these skills? These are the yes. questions you should answer. Yes. You, you don't, it's not enough to say, I chose this school because uh, 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 I wanted to work with this professor and the professor uh, will help me get this skill. No. Mm-hmm. Give sometimes, a specific reason. Sometimes students will say, oh, I chose this school because their tuition is affordable. 
or I chose this school because they they were very quick in replying to my emails. Replying to emails. Assisted me. You know, all of that is is doesn't work. Okay, the f- yeah. try and focus on real academic reasons, real professional reasons, something about the school that is compelling to the kind of research that you do. For instance, if I need to go back on the um, example you gave about data, right? This student who is very interested in data and a data management system that will help her company track, uh, you know, things that are lost in the process. One of the reasons why you might be able to, uh, you might have chosen one particular school over the other is perhaps because this school um, has a specially designed track or resources or tools or softwares or technology that uh, trains and prepares students in this particular issue, right? Yeah. And you believe that going there uh, would expose you to one of the cutting edge resources and tools that are used to track data and manage data efficiently in a company as big as yours, right? That's one of the, one of the very solid reasons. Or you can even talk about uh, case management and exposure mm-hmm. to real world cases, right? You know, mm-hmm. most MBAs manage, they use case studies as one of the ways that they teach people. So they'll bring cases from uh, different companies across the world and they ask the students to analyze it, make sense of it, solve the problem, right? It's not every school that does it very well. So maybe one of the reasons why you're going to this particular school is because you're going to be exposed to you know, real cases around the world that will prepare you for a similar kind when you when you return back home, right? yeah. So Paul, let, let me let me give this. Uh, I think this this lady we coach who was in the banking industry. Her school have had a, a relationship with some of the banks in in America, for example, Bank of America, Chase, and all that. And mm-hmm. her reason was her reason for choosing the school was that there's an internship component where students work. Uh, on cases, as you said, on a mm-hmm. project with Bank of America. So they look at mm-hmm. loan management system of Bank of America and how Bank of America respond to loan management. And after this, after doing this kind of project analysis, you write a research and recommendations on it. And for her, she is coming to this group because of this specific partnership. And that makes sense looking at her purpose of study and 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 the reason she is coming to the school. That makes sense. Yes, Everything is connected. You cannot give a, a reason why you want to study and the reason why the school will help you fulfill the reason why you want to study does not connect. That's no make sense. Disconnected. And yes. yes, it's disconnected. And this is yeah. In this way, you can connect, make good connection if you get the proper coaching, get proper preparation, get people who can help you connect the dots and even make your own story uh, uh, shine. There are some people who feel like they, they have to tell somebody's story to get their visa. No, your own story. Even if you are coming as, uh, uh, from, from undergraduate studies and you want to pursue a PhD, your own story can make it compelling. Either. So if you need help, as we always said, email us and let's see if you have time or we are able to mm-hmm. sit with you for a few minutes to help you brainstorm we have talked about six things number one think about you know the professional nature of the program number two think about um you know the funding think about clear purpose a clear plan try not to disconnect your the reasons why you want to study from a real world situation and then the last thing is you have a very strong clear reason why you apply to this particular school and again like i said if you need any help please feel free reach out we'll see what we can do with the rest of our time that we have We'll see you in the rest of our videos. We wish you all the best. Peace out.